It's Monday. I've got mail. It's Mailbag Monday time. Yay! Let's start with this big one. Mostly because it takes up so much space. It says, one times diode, one times hubs. Interesting. Let's see what we got in here. Hmm, what have we here? USB 2.0 hub, it says, through the plastic. Come on, open, open! Okay, so we've got a USB charger. What says 1000 milliamps? We've got a USB lead with a coaxial connector on one end and we've got a heavily crushed package here that has a USB high speed hub 2.0 good for Windows 7 well hopefully it works for anything because there is not a Windows 7 machine anywhere in the house not a Windows anything machine anywhere in the house Features, one upstream and four downstream USB port included. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Huh. Okay. Uh, fully compliant with USB spec. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, whatever. Made in China, obviously. That looks to me like a USB power bar. Ooh, those switches are a little soft. No, they're clicking okay. I guess they just needed to be worked in. Okay, so that looks to all the world like USB data. And that would be the power cord that plugs in there. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let's have some USB stuff. Um, well, we'll start with that little flashlight module. Oh! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that doesn't bode well. Does it even work? Oh, maybe that guy doesn't work. Okay. Got a couple of these little guys. I know they work. There we go. <laughs> what else do I have in here? Oh, another one. Well, let's plug this in too. See what it says. It is 5.21 volts. Zero milliamps, of course. Turn some of those guys on. It's dragged it down to 4.1 volts, 4.2 volts. Let's see, can you see that? There we go. That's not really performance. Let's turn one, two, three of those off. Well then, let's just put that guy up there. Does it draw? 10 milliamps? Is that what that says? And even with just that in there, it's drawn it down to 4.6. What the hell? That can't be right. So does that mean that this wire is super flimsy and it's dropping all kinds of voltage across it? Really? I'm going to have to spend some time with this in another video. Um, let's go over to the listing and see what this thing is. Because it seems like a cool idea. Except for the voltage drops like just horrendously. Though it might be this or it might be this thin wire. Hmm. So for a change, this one came from Banggood, 7 ports, USB 2.0 hub, USB splitter power on off switch with USAC adapter, which is exactly what that looks like, and that adapter, yeah, uh, cost me $7.76, well it's currently sold out so you can't buy one, but I bet you there's something similar if you search around for it. 
specification 7 USB 2.0 ports white supports all of the operating systems which of course it should dimensions yeah yeah, yeah blah 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 uh, with US AC adapters the one that I got um, and as I mentioned when I looked at it the adapter says it's a 1000 milliamp or 1 amp adapter but when I loaded it down a little bit it really sucked the voltage down so I'm gonna have to investigate that a little bit further like I said I think the problem is probably just this skinny little cable but we'll have to see okay what else was in that package looks kind of diodey it said diodes on the package didn't it yes it did a whole assortment of diodes What does some of this scribbling on here say? 4V3? One 1W11V? One uh-huh! Where's my component tester? Well, that one says 4V3. So, let's grab one of these out of here and see what it says. Fairly soft leads. Uh, let's, there we go. Focus. It is a diode with a forward voltage of 4.14 volts. Oh, it's a diode. It's reading it in both directions. Okay, what happens if I flip it around? And uh, now it's moved it to the other side, 4.13 volts. 4 volts. Forward drop across. It's a Zener diode. They're Zeners. Okay. Come on. These are annoying little packages. So there's the answer. It is, in fact, 260 pieces diodes, 1 watt, 3.3 to 39 volt Zener diode assortment kit. Uh, for seven dollars and sixty-two cents Canadian. Um, dee -dee -dee -dee. So they are all one watt. Um, the voltages are well, you can see them there. Um, okay, and ten pieces of each for a total of two hundred and sixty pieces. Okay, I can see myself using some of these lower voltages, um, maybe up to twelve volts. Not sure that I'm ever going to need Zener diodes over 20 volts, or even up to 39 volts, but you never know. And I mean, they were fairly, well, okay, they're not horribly cheap. By my standards, they are cheap. If you go down to any North American supplier, they're going to be way more than that. But uh, $7.62 for 260 pieces, even if I only ever use... You know, half of the voltages, it's still a deal. Next thing, uh, one times module and one times module. I like modules. Modules are fun. Huh? That's certainly more than one times module. Looks like I've got four of that kind of thing and five of that kind of thing. Oh, there's two in that bag. So I got five of this kind of thing. Okay, let's open up one of these bags. Actually, let's be violent. Oh, does it say it's uh, 
Sanwu is a manufacturer there. Let's zoom in on it so you can see it too. Focus, focus. Thank you. Uh, what do we got going on here? Got five volts and ground over there. Got three pins there. Oh, got left and right, left and right. Three pins there. This is an amplifier module of some description. Let me just find my magnifying glass and see if I can see what it says on the chip. Can I get any closer? No. Okay. There we go. PAM8403. Okay. So we'll look that up. I'm pretty sure that is an audio amplifier module just with the way the inputs and outputs are list labeled. But let's take a look at the listing and find out for sure. So I was right. It is a mini digital, digital amplifier board. Five pieces DC 5 volt PAM8403. A 3 one amplifier module dual track for some reason. Bought it from Robot Home for $3.01 Canadian for the five of them. Neat. Um, or wait, was that? No, I I paid two dollars and thirty-one American, which you know, is pretty much the same price as it is today. Um, let's see if it says much of anything about it down here. Runs on two and a half to five and a half volts. Power output power two times three watts. And the chip name, and that's about all it says. And these other things that came in that same package, they all look like they're the same thing. Yeah, they all look the same part number on them. So we'll just open one up and find out what it is. Yeah, runaway transistor. It has a schematic. That's convenient. Okay, whoa, sorry about the zoom inch there. That's close enough. So what do we got? Two transistors, two resistors, and a photoresistor. Simple enough little circuit to put together. So the photoresistor in series with one resistor to the base of the first transistor in open collector mode with 1K load resistor. Drives a second transistor, which turns on whatever your output is. When the light goes low, I think. No, high. Uh, brightness reduces the resistance of that. Reducing the resistance of that will increase the voltage on the base. Yeah, turn the transistor on. Okay. And for some reason, I got five of them. Oh. So, I bought five pieces light control sensor switch suite DIY electronic training kit study student kit random keyword thing from Robot Home. Five of them for 74 cents. That's got to have been an auction. Unfortunately, it was so long ago that this uh, listing is gone completely, so I can't click on it. But I'll look at similar items. Um, so right now they're selling one of them for $1.23 from the same seller, Robot Home. Um, or they're selling four of them for $1.59. Or ten of them, that's somebody else, but that's $3.64. Uh, yeah, okay. Next thing, electronic components. Mm hmm that's likely. Of course, it's just as likely not to be, but... A little CD that says driver. And a USB-ish module. Let's see what's in there. Oh, it's got a little slot to slide a memory card of some kind in there. And that says driver. Oh wait, that's not, hang on. That's not a memory card. 
That's a SIM card, I think. So here's a SIM, an old SIM card that is no longer active. I was trying to cut it down to be a micro SIM just for the fun of it. But I can't put that in there. Okay, I'll have to... But yeah, I'm 99% sure that's a SIM card. Let me just zoom in there. See that? Six pins in that configuration. Where's this SIM card again? Yeah, six pins in that configuration. I'm pretty confident that that's a little SIM card slot. Let's see what the disc has to say for itself here. USB SIM editor? That's cool. What else does it have? USB SIM 9.0. Okay, drivers and things. One with some Chinese characters in its name. Uh, and drivers and drivers. Huh. Not seeing any Linux drivers for this thing. No? Okay, here we go. Functions. Admittedly with the software, but we'll see what happens here. Program will connect to the card reader. Oh, you can look at the phone book. Um, read and write to the SIM card. Edit various records and stuff. Edit the phone book. Okay. Set pins on the SIM. Huh. That's slick. Okay, of course it's all Windows. I have to find a Windows computer. I wonder if it'll work under Wine. Another project for another day. I guess looking at the listing would help us here understand what this is. USB cell phone standard SIM card reader copy cloner writer SMS backup GSM or CDMA. Or presumably, well, maybe not LTE. Um, from Top Electronic 1980, uh, $1.46 American, $1.82 Canadian. Description 100% brand new and high quality. Output red laser straightly. What? Laser? Um. Okay, that is not the description of this. Okay, next, electronic components again. Let's see if this is, makes any more sense than the last thing that I opened. It's a kit. I like kits. I'm not especially thrilled with kits that don't come with a schematic or any instructions. But, let's... Uh, Crack this one open and see if we can figure out what it is just from the context. It has more stuff, which means it's going to be more fun to put together. Uh, five of one type of resistor, wall diode, an assortment of other kinds of resistors. What do you got in here? Two transistors, uh, one, two, three, four electrolytic capacitors. Oh, another transistor. Um... More resistors, no, ceramic capacitors, sorry. Uh, four little ceramic capacitors, one electrolytic, a header socket for the, uh, for the power lead, and a microphone. Ha! Ah. EQ kit brand. Nice solder mask on that one. Hmm. Okay. Got the three transistors along this side, the microphones over there. Power connector. Capacitors, blah blah blah. Oh, and there's one LED. I found it. 
just scrolling through and looking at the pretty pictures in my history. This is a clap control switch. Sweet DIY kit electronic production Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi? Really? Um, got it from Go Win Electronic, who sells me quite a bunch of cheap stuff. Got it for dollar seventy four Canadian with the usual free shipping from Hong Kong, Taiwan, China. Does it say anything about how it works? Oh, look at this! It's got a full circuit description. Is there a schematic? No, but we have a circuit description. Q1 and Q2 comprise two audio amplifier circuits. Audio, uh, so we've got an RC circuit that uh, tunes the frequency to about 3 kilohertz. Power is turned on. Uh, the light does not shine. The LED, when the microphone receives control signal, it flips the flip-flop and turns the... Okay. It's a clapper! It's a clapper switch thing! Woohoo! Oh, this should be fun. Anybody who doesn't remember what these are, you probably weren't around to watch cheesy TV commercials in the 80s. It is a switch that turns on and off when you go. And they're super annoying, and when you drop something in the room, it turns it off. And But <laughs> it's just such a cheesy thing I thought it'd be fun to play with. So... Another one to add to my pile of kits to build when I feel like building kits. Speaking of which, what do you guys think of watching kit build videos? I've done a couple now. Um, comments. Alright, last one. Another one with the description of electronic components. So far we've done pretty well on electronic components this time. Uh, what does that say? Lee Shop. Okay. Hmm. Looks like. Ah, okay. It's a set of screw terminals to a. Huh? Oh, I thought it was for a nano, but it's not. That's interesting. Oh, is that the odd asymmetric pin spacing for an Uno? That does look. Hang on. Okay, let's put the Uno in here. Yes. Yes, that does look... Wait, that's not Uno, that's a motor shield. Where's the Uno? There it is. That does look like the, the odd pin spacing for an Uno. One... Too. Oh, right. And then you can still stack a, uh, a shield on top by the looks of it. If you put it the right direction. Why does this shield not want to sit? There we go. Well, it's a little cattywampus. Oh, that works. Yeah. So you can still stack shields. But you can screw things onto screw terminals on the side. That's neat. Oh, I like that. And, and it's got all the labelings along the sides too. So you can see what you're doing. No guesswork. That's nicely labeled actually. Those are slick. Arduino Uno R3 Proto Screw Shield V2 Expansion Board Compatible Arduino M76 from Gogan Electronic. Hmm, wonder why it wasn't in the same package as the other one. I must have... Ah, yes, I bought... This was an auction. That's probably why I bought it on a different day. Uh, $1.29 for this. That was quite a variety today. And several, several kits to build. Um, some modules, that'll be cool. This thing I need to experiment with. Got to find a Windows computer to play with that one. More components for stock. Happy days. Thanks for watching. 
Um, if you have anything to say, uh, corrections, comments, leave them down in the description below. Um, if you're not subscribed, what the heck are you doing? Come on, give me a break here. Um, anything else? Yeah, comments, and I will talk to you in a while.